As for the injustice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. As for the injustice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Our readings today talk about hearing and understanding. We all know there's a difference. I'm sure all of us have at certain moments been sure someone heard us, but later when we hear what they say about what we said to them, we realize they didn't understand us. And so it is with us and God. So as we gather together today, let's call to mind our sins and ask God for his forgiveness and understanding. Lord Jesus, you sowed the seeds of mercy and reconciliation among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you shower us with mercy and kindness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Um, let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it not. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Justice from the heavens, the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seeds to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do me will do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the spear that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The spear that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You visit the earth, give it water. You fill it with riches. God's ever flowing river brings over to repair the rain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. And thus you provide for the earth. You drench its furrows, you level it, you soften it with showers, you bless its growth. The seed that falls on the ground will yield the fruitful harvest. You crown the year with your bounty. Abundance flows in your pathways, in pastures of the desert it flows, the hills are burning with joy. The seed that falls on the ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The meadows are clothed with flocks. The valleys are decked with wheat. They shout for joy. Yes, they sing. The seed that falls on the ground will yield a fruitful reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sisters and brothers, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, because of the one who subjected it and hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now, and not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will have life forever.
and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirty-four. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word, of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Emily Latella, played by Gilda Ratner, was a character on the uh, Saturday Live Comedy Program. I was a little chagrined looking her up on YouTube to realize she was on the show 45 years ago. A long time ago. But this character, Emily Latella, would give editorials on issues of the day. But Miss Latella would get things a little wrong. For instance, she said, why our parents so worried about violins on television? Why are they making sure that violins are only on television after 9 o'clock at night? That means the little kitties won't ever see a violin and will not ever learn to play a violin. They'll all play guitars and instead become rock and roll people. We know how they'll turn out. And then they had to tell her, 
No, Mrs. Latella, Miss Latella, it's violence on television, not violence. And she, as she ended all her editorials, would then look at the audience and say, never mind. Well, today we're challenged to not be Emily Latella with the gospel. We're supposed to understand and live and spread the word of God. Well, how? Well, of course, the parable of the sower, which Jesus gives us today, um, gives us a description of how to live. The seed, of course, is the word of God. The sower is God or Jesus. And we, who are we? We're the soil, we're the dirt of the uh, garden. And for soil to be good for plowing and planting, we know what happens. First, it has to be broken up. The plow, be plowed or hoed, or in modern times, rototilled. Um, and what's that in our lives? Is we're the soil. Well, I say that plowing, rototilling, whatever you want to call it, that's repentance. Being aware of our sins, being repentant for our sins. Secondly, of course, we know if you want a good garden, um, it has to be fertilized. My aunt was always big about that, especially with tomatoes. She said, tomatoes are very hard in the soil. You have to fertilize at the beginning of when you're planting the uh, tomatoes. Um, and of course, what's that fertilizing? We need prayer. We need to be people of prayer. And then, of course, we know it has to be watered, particularly right now. I think I'm going to sneak in an extra prayer for rain today. We know we need some rain. Uh, we've had a few, a little bit the past few days, but the grass is all looking still very dejected. Well, what's our watering? Well, it's the scriptures, the Bible, the sacraments. They help to uh, um, nourish the life within us of God. Then, of course, then the plant, the seed sprouts, and it bears fruit. What is that fruit? Well, I think we know what that is, our good works. It's not enough just to hear the word of God, to have it grow in our lives, it needs to give out fruit, good works. And then there's the ultimate thing. Once the seed has yielded, as Jesus says, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold, then it's the turn of that seed to be cast. Matter of fact, the type of sowing Jesus um, has uh, described in the parable of the sower, where it's just thrown every which way, so it falls places where it really needed, because it's not really going to grow there. There was a name for that type of throwing around seed uh, in uh, olden times, it was called broadcasting. We just now think of it because of radio waves. It was just chained to that, just like radio waves go out from an antenna, just like those seeds go out from the sower. So, are we spreading the word of God in our lives? Are we broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ? Well, it's very obvious that we can be a Miss Emily Latella who doesn't really understand the Word of God, who doesn't be a person of repentance, doesn't uh, uh, fertilize our lives with prayer and the uh, order of our lives with the scriptures. We don't uh, yield fruit with good deeds. And if we're the people like that, we're just like this. No. The gospel may come to us. The word of God may be planted in our lives, but ultimately we end up saying, never mind. Why? What does Jesus say? Because we're not hearing, we're not understanding. And so we have to hear and understand. The question we need to answer today is, am I doing it? Am I? able to
to receive the word of God, have it grow in my life, bear fruit, and spread that seed. Now, spreading that seed may seem like a daunting task. I don't know about you, but uh, even me, who's a priest, discussing faith with people uh, uh, is sometimes difficult. Sometimes I'm caught unawares. I'm in the line at Wegmans and thinking about, you know, uh, do I want to buy bags or just carry stuff in my arms? Thank you, government, for getting rid of convenient plastic bags. But anyways, uh, so I'm thinking about that instead of, uh, you know, whatever, and someone sees me, because maybe I'm in my collar, and like, oh, Father, how are you? You know, I've been thinking of getting back to church, and I just, you know, let's just say, sort of ambushed that I can't think of what to say. But of course, it doesn't have to be really so dumb. It just means sharing what we've experienced of the Word of God in our lives. Saying something like, God means a lot to me. Mass means a lot to me, receiving Jesus in Holy Communion. Why don't you join us? Just something as simple as that can be the casting of the seed. So today, I hope we're not just soil that's received the seed, the Word of God. I hope each of us is a garden. I hope each of us is bearing fruit. And then there's seed that we can scatter. Let's share the produce of our garden. Let's share the Word of God with all those around us by making sure we hear and understand. I believe in one God, the Father of all, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before the angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial to the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For I see he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we come before you as a family of faith and hope, asking for your intercession in our prayers. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Lucio, and all the clergy of our diocese, that they continue to be beacons of faith and love. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civil and religious leaders, that they may provide hope for their communities by assuring them of God's abiding love and care. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for those who suffer from the darkness of petty politics and poor relationships, whether in government, the workplace, or the family. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and for all those who care for them, that they may know the healing powers of the Lord Jesus. We pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering the effects of violence, especially in the streets of our community, that their darkness will convert to the light of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from the effects of the pandemic, whether physically or financially, that they may find comfort in Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our beloved dead and for Richard Miles, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts and minds, we offer our personal wants and needs to our Heavenly Father. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray in a special way for rain, which is much needed for crops in our area. We pray to the Lord. And now we join together in the novena prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic, which is on the back of your worship aids. O Mary, full of grace, patroness of this nation and mother of the church, in this time of illness and world by need, we seek your intercession for the human family before your son's throne of grace and mercy. We ask for strength and adversity, help and weakness and comfort and sorrow. Help us, O Blessed Mother, to be filled with confidence and trust in the tender compassion of our God. Let us not be afraid, like our own St. Mary and Pope, who entrusted her life and ministry among the outcasts of society into the care of our divine physician. Continue to watch over all who are sick, as well as those who care for them, and give wisdom to all who are seeking a cure. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Um, and we'll continue with the prayer for the St. Margaret's Capital Campaign. If the Lord does not build the house, in vain do its builders labor. Lord, as we seek to maintain and repair this our house of worship, we ask you to bless our efforts. Give us all hearts open to generous giving, both for our capital campaign and other works of charity. May our prayer, praise, and thankful hearts in this parish church Make us all your willing servants. We thank you for this, our beautiful church, and we ask your blessings on all those, living and dead, who help build this church. May all our work be built up by your guidance and help. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. St. Margaret Mary, pray for us. Loving God, even when we fail to recognize your presence in our lives, you still guide and protect us. Make us ever aware of our membership in your family. We ask for this in all our prayers, through Christ. Amen. Friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, 
the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And in your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and ever to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the light that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women, whom you made for the glory of your name, into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we which will be poured out 
for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The Sophitur of the Sign of Peace. Oh, 
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just uh, uh, to announce one a reminder, we leave by the corner perch drive doors. Um, we had a little incident yesterday. Someone got a little mixed up and tried to leave through those doors there, and they ended up walking into one of our windows. It looked like it was an open doorway, so I think we're going to have to put a banner up there or something. Uh, and uh, I heard this sort of boinging sound. Walked out of the poor man was staggering around after having hit the window. Uh, so, uh, so watch out for that. Also, uh, we uh, have um, uh, a bunch of handouts. Once again, a reminder: if you've taken a book or a bulletin or whatever, take it home with you. Okay, even a miscellet. You don't want the back. You take it home with you to keep. Okay. And because uh, um, uh, that's part of our, uh, and you can bring it back here each time you return. The one time worship aids, Michael will not be insulted if you recycle those. That's fine. So, um, and uh, lastly, uh, um, I hope that all of you pray for rain because we do need it. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is in. Amen. Amen.